come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Jesus, are you from the 50s now? <laughs> this is Casey Kasem. This is the morning, uh, is the morning zoo. It's we wanted around. it more excitable, so there we go. So every Saturday night, we do this right here on your radio dial, which isn't really the radio. It's actually on the internet. But you can yeah. find us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn, Google Play Store, everywhere. If you found us there, folks, please... Give us a star rating or a like because it helps other like-minded folks like yourself find us. It really does help out. Algorithms and all that shit. It's yeah. Crazy. Uh, so what we do is we watch movies every Saturday and then we sit around and talk about them afterwards for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. Who are the people who will talk about these movies you want to know? The Internet Radio Superstars. Nick. Holly. Sean. And I'm Colin. And Colin did lines before this podcast, apparently. <laughs> well, I mean, it is the 80s that we're going back to, That's so I true. think it's yeah. only appropriate. So, uh, in uh, kinship with the 80s, we all did coke before this podcast. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. But, no. So, You'll never know. <laughs> we're too broke for that. <laughs> Backpedaling. Um, so, tonight's movie. So, this was uh, part of our listeners' choice Pick selection one. Yes. that we did um, in November. We asked you guys what you wanted us to review. Thank you all very much for submitting because we got yes, a thank you. bunch of submissions. We got of some movies. good ones. We got so a list. <laughs> what we did is we sat around and uh, there was actually a night when we sat around and watched mm-hmm. a bunch of trailers of some of the ones that we yep. hadn't heard of because yep. I think that's what we were going for. Stuff that we hadn't heard of or hadn't seen before. Yeah. yeah. That we were all kind of interested in. We saw the trailer for Dead Heat. Dead Heat. And Sean it was, was unanimous, I think. It really <laughs> was. We're like, yes, we're yes. picking this. Obviously. I, mean, I think me and Colin almost had a fight over who was going to pick it. And he's yeah. like, well, you, you, you pick it, and then I it can pick it. It had a pretty one. good trailer. Yeah. It had a good trailer. I remember when I was going for my pick, I was like, well, Sean, you're doing Dead Heat, right? That was a factor <laughs> in my choice. Has to pick yeah. Dead heat. <laughs> yeah. So this was uh, suggested by Dom Cree. Uh, thank you, Dom. Thank you, so Dom. Thank you, Dom. So, Sean, what year was this movie made? 1988. Uh, the 80s. Uh, the uh, late 80s. 88. Yes, the, a, the height of Treat Williams. A good year, Maybe. I think. <laughs> Until I they got know. to like the substitute. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> who made Treat Williams? A star. A movie star. I, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you, whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's one we don't know. Where did we Treat don't Williams know start off? Why, but uh, I mean, in the series of uh, dramatic roles. I imagine. Not necessarily known as a comedic actor, I don't think. So maybe that's why he was kind of playing against type in this movie, we think. This is where Sean says, no, he was in all sorts he of. He was in, uh, he's been in comedy. <laughs> comedy yeah, did you films. not see Phantom? The Phantom. He was pretty <laughs> funny in that. <laughs> when he got evaporated. Yeah. That's we watched that, was, that on yeah. this show. We did. Funny. Uh, so who is uh, the director of this film? Mark Goldblatt. Who's he? He is an editor. He's a Hollywood editor, actually. Um, uh, I wonder. I, I just had him up here. Um, but mostly. Said, like Terminator 2. And, Terminator. Uh, I mean, just Terminator way back to like the just, howling. That would kind of blow me yeah, away. Yeah, you listed off a I, smorgasbord. There was a whole shitload. The last yeah. thing he did was Chappie. But before that, and you may know some of these listeners. I mean, Piranha, Halloween 2, uh, The Howling, Wavelength, The Terminator, Rambo First Blood Part 2, Commando, Jumpin' Jack Flash, Predator 2, Nightbreed, Last Boy Scout. Terminator 2, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Sean's Brothers, favorite. that classic. <laughs> and Showgirls. Oh, Showgirls. Showgirls. Colin's favorite. True Lies, Starship <laughs> Troopers, <laughs> Armageddon, Detroit Rock City, Hollow Man, Pearl Harbor, Bad Company, Bad Boys 2. The list goes on. It goes yeah. on and on. A lot of action movies. The but Wolfman, it, your favorite. There you go. But as like a director, Wolfman? we're saying he only did, uh, I think he did three, three films. Dead Heat being his first. Uh, Triumph. Like, Dead Heat, The Punisher, and uh, an episode of Erie, Indiana. All right, so we're saying The Punisher, but we're actually talking about the Dolph Lundgren, Lou Gossett Jr. Punisher. Yes, yeah. the 1989. From 1989. The Punisher. Not the Thomas Jane Punisher. No. Yeah. Um, all right, so before we get into this movie, I'm curious if any of you have seen or heard of a movie called DOA. No. I've nope. heard of it. I have not seen it, but I am familiar. I saw a piece of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a, that would clinch the deal for me, but it was a, a piece of it shows up in this movie. But how old is that movie? It's well, I think it's white. from the '50s with Edmund O'Brien. However, however, this is what also made me think of it. It was remade with Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan, who were a couple at the time in 
1988. As DOA? As DOA. Uh, yeah. And it's basically about a, uh, it's a plot about a guy who has to solve his own murder because he's poisoned. He goes to the doctor, finds out he's been poisoned. He's got 24 hours to find out who killed him. Mm-hmm. Does that sound familiar? It does. <laughs> it, it does. Yeah. No, I've heard of it. I just haven't seen it. A little bit. Yeah. What Which is an interesting concept. I like We're it. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why not remake it with uh, if you actually got killed? Right. Came back as a Which zombie, makes it even better. And had 24 hours before you decompose to find out. Let's add some Joe out. Piscopo yeah. and right. call it a day. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> There's also uh, a movie called Red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Chibu- <laughs> yeah. She came out in 1988. Do you, is there something happening here? <laughs> I know Red Heat. There's a lot of heat going on. Did I say Red Heat? <laughs> it was, it's Red, yeah, red it's Heat. Red Heat, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah. this movie's called Dead, Dead heat. heat. Dead Heat. Same year. Same year as DOA. Same year as... What was happening it's, in the zeitgeist that uh, made cops, dead heat? Man. Buddy cops. Yeah. Yeah. And people investigating their own deaths. Did they do that in Red Heat? No, but they did it in DOA. Which came right. Out the same. Yeah. I was like, all right. I'm trying so to the only connection the is the title. Cross, <laughs> with Red Heat. Cross that's it. the streams. <laughs> he was, I mean, he was investigating in this to find out who killed him. Yeah. Someone flipped that switch. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed they do. Okay, so this movie. <laughs> this? Right? So we get the, a team up, a dream team up. Dream I think. team. <laughs> I didn't know I wanted it until I got it. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Joe Piscopo, Treat Williams. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, I mean, Treat Williams plays these more straight-laced cop, yeah. I guess it would seem. And obviously Joe Piscopo is the uh, kind of the loose cannon, the as it were. Yes. The He's the liners. guy who works out at the gym. Uh, constantly, apparently. Constantly, <laughs> who wears the flashy jackets, the arm uh, massive, yeah, the, the shoulder pads, massive shoulder pads, yeah, pads. leather, leather jackets, and short, comes on to every single woman who just randomly, even nuns, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Anybody yeah. You know, just comes within his uh, his field of vision. Well, they're all fair game, yeah, obviously. Yes. So Joe P- Joe Piscopo was a Saturday Night Live comedian. Yes, yeah. yeah. I know it's the only did, thing I know him from. Yeah, that's because I'm saying he did he all their movie roles. Famously, right? did a skit with Eddie Murphy where they portrayed Frank Sinatra and Stevie Wonder doing yeah. Ebony and Ivory. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the big one I remember. Didn't he also do a version of uh, of the what's the Carol O'Connor show? Uh, all in the family. All in the family. Didn't he do like a a bit with? It may have been with Eddie Murphy where they're at the piano singing. That's what I'm summer. talking about. That's, Is that it? Yeah. That's Ebony and Ivory. Oh, yeah. That? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. You are black and I. Am yeah. Black. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You are blind as a bat. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh-huh. It's great. <laughs> oh. So we know he did other movie roles, and this had to have come. Although they're escaping my memory at this. Yeah, moment, I but, couldn't name a. Uh, this had to come at like toward the end of his. I'm assuming the end of his movie. Popularity, sure. This is what Let's you do out. when it's like, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm written, the the phone isn't ringing so much anymore. Well, hey, Joe, we got this movie called Dead, Dead Heat, Heat that you yeah. should check out. And his, his agent signed him up. The for sidekicks it. hadn't happened yet. Right. You that could was play later. A badass cop. <laughs> sidekicks. Sidekicks. Well, the badass well, cop yeah. thing was like also an '80s staple. Mm-hmm. Of course, that was kind of codified in a movie. Called Lethal Weapon. I'm going to Heard say, of it, right? Yeah. The buddy cop. Yeah. yeah. And that was made by a guy named Shane Black, mm-hmm. written mm-hmm. by a guy named Shane Black. Colin, who wrote this movie, Dead Heat? Uh, this was made by, uh, written by a guy named Terry Black. Black. <laughs> Any relation? Shane Black's brother. There it is. Yeah. Shane Black also makes a cameo in this movie as a cop later on. Yeah. He's so the one that, that gets, who gives up his uh, gun at the sight of a badge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is great. Which is why we all need badges, just so right. we can go up and like, hey, I'm a police officer. Give me your I need, gun. Yeah. I need what you have. We don't now. need a radio headquarters. <laughs> no, just right. give it to the no. dead guy who came out of a burning van. Happens yeah. every episode it's of fine. Supernatural. So. It's fine. <laughs> oh, awesome. All right, so let's uh, set up this movie. Like, what what is this thing about? Oh, geez. Uh, so they're partners. They're cops. Uh, badass because they all drive, drive a red convertible like you do well, in the I 80s. Mean, yeah. Everybody does. And yeah. this is probably Los Angeles. Or is it San Francisco? There's San Francisco. Francisco. I feel yeah, like it's probably like San, San Francisco. Francisco. It's uh, just as you do in California. Yes. All right. Always in California. Um, but how do they – shit. How do they get onto the – oh. Jewelry there's heist. the jewelry heist at the beginning yes. of the movie by some really – Creep ass looking dudes. Yeah. Um, who at this point we just thought they were ugly. Yeah, we just thought and they dumb. Were, yeah, we didn't they know. Were, they just kind of growl and just like. Ugh. 
And they got some shit on their face. Yeah, they Blemishes. look like yeah. Yes, to say the least. Yeah. Um, they rob the place, and then the entire police brigade shows up within 30 seconds. And well, it's a good response system. Sure. They're in, in San Francisco. Yes. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't fuck with them. No, no apparently not. Because no, no. uh, they will shoot your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which they proceed to do once the burglars exit the building. Um and they keep shooting them and yeah. keep shooting keep them shooting and keep and shooting, shooting them. And they shooting. won't go down. They and won't they won't fall. go down. Well, yeah. nobody has die. the idea that you've got to shoot these guys in the head. I mean, well, sure. a headshot might be... Center mass, to... man. you got to yeah. go for the center mass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You Take think that down. after the vo- enough of the volleys that they took that there wouldn't be anything left of them, but these right. guys just keep on... That's kind of what I was waiting for, them. like somebody mm-hmm. to get like, like just... The middle of the arm just shot like off, in, but have it keep going. Yeah. Kind of like Return of the Living Dead 3. Yeah. When yeah. he gets the middle shot off, but yeah. he's still going because he's in the machine. That's what, kind of what I was expecting. <laughs> just like eviscerated by bullets, but not dead, but not stopping. Going, yeah. Right. That's what I was waiting but for. But they don't want to go too far off the bat because there's still some like mystery as to what's going on here at the mm-hmm. beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they eventually like bring them down. One well, gets, hero cop. Well, uh, yes. treat Williams because, I mean, let's say this guy is a fucking action hero. Yeah. He gets in, <laughs> he steals the squad commander or the lieutenant's cop. Or car. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, Robert Picardo also yes. making a with a mustache with a with a caterpillar under his nose. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing <laughs> mustache. And uh, so, what was his method? He's like, I'm gonna drive by drive by these guys right. while and shot shoot out the out window, the passenger side window. Which has got, can't be accurate whatsoever <laughs> no. compared to 50 cops shooting at these guys. Like, what does he think he's going to do? Well, he's yeah. like, I'm going to yeah. take care of this. Yeah, he's I mean, it's only the way that an action movie cop can. <laughs> I'm going to be doing something really extravagant yeah. and stupid, but it's going to totally bring them down. It doesn't bring them down. No. Well, the only one reason- gets accidentally blown up by his own grenade. Yeah, well, the guy drops his own grenade. That's the only reason it worked. But he does stop the other guy by driving straight into him with the car. <laughs> yeah. Which actually looks pretty decent. It looked good. So yeah, it did. That. Slammed it into him. It was pretty, yeah. yeah. It was good. Solid. Yeah. And so now they're on the case of trying to figure out, first of all, they're all kind of wondering, like, why we shot these guys 50 times each. Why aren't they down? Why aren't mm-hmm. they dead? Let's What's take them on? to the morgue and find out. So they go to the morgue, and then the... It seems uh, reasonable so far. Sure. So sure. far, yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So far, I'm in. Yeah. A few quips by Joe Piscopo every now and again to kind of throw us <laughs> off a little bit. But other than that, we're uh-huh. in. Uh-huh. We're, yep. we're with them. So they get sent to the morgue. Um, and, uh, what was her name? Elizabeth? I forgot her name. Uh, Randy? Rand- oh, it's no, it's Dr. Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca. Yeah, Rebecca. Smithers. Dr. Uh, Dr. Smithers. Smithers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. She calls them, uh, back down to the morgue to show them some, a discovery she's made. Of uh, the sexual tension between her you and Treatment. You can Treatment. cut it Yes. With we all knife. discovered the sexual tension at that point in the movie. <laughs> just Liter- that look he gave her. Just... Literally, he walks in and Sean goes, well, they've had sex. They've had, it's, they have a history. <laughs> they know each other. Well, hello, Elizabeth. Well, hello. He's like, hello. Roger. How are you? What's his name? Roger, Roger. Mortis. Yeah. Roger, Roger Mortis. Mortis. Wink, wink. <laughs> this is not foreshadowing wink, wink. at all. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, and she and she brings them in. She shows them the bodies. Apparently, they've been there before. They have autopsy marks all over their body. Mm. Um, Peculiar. She's got, uh, very, yeah. she's got pictures of them previously in the morgue. It's mm. very uh, interesting. It's, yeah. it's weird. Why? That's more evidence what's building. Up. Something weird is happening here. Right. And then what's his name? Mm. Uh, the head body doc. Oh, the uh, old Darren man, McGavin. Darren McGavin, <laughs> the dad from a Christmas old story. Old man from a yes. Christmas story. He's yeah. he. I, I think he actually said this. Like, well, obviously you screwed up, and uh, when you were done, they got up and walked out. I think that was his explanation <laughs> for the whole situation at that point. Because yeah. that's the natural thing. Because that <laughs> seems legit. Well, as you do, I mean, when that happens to you, you yeah. just kind of you shrug it off, walk it off. You don't want to dwell on these things, right? <laughs> and he's her boss, right? Yes. Yeah. That's what I yeah, yeah, I think he's, he's the, the medical board. examiner. Yeah. Yes, of the the county medical examiner. She's like the assistant at that point. Yeah. So they do a little investigating. They found they're investigating. I like this. So they're very, well because there's a <laughs> compound in the in the body. Stream, yes. Uh, that leads them to a chemical company called Dante's Chemicals. Yes. Right. Which. Yes. Sure. Again, they're like, okay, so I don't know where they're going with that. It's like there's some kind of hell imagery associated with Dante. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Well, no. and there's also, um, in the end credits, there was a special thank you to Joe Dante. Mm. So I'm guessing there that's, you go. There it that's is. it. There yep. it is. That's the connection. Okay. Yep. There we go. So like he did the howling. The right. Well, there you blooded. go. Okay. Yeah. There it is. And Piranha. Boom. Piranha. All right. Sorry. Solved. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, so they go to Dante Chemicals because they're like, well, they just ordered a huge supply of this, mm-hmm. so we're going down there to check this out. Yep. Uh, they and run they into, meet 
the creepy uh, uh, security guard at the front desk. Oh, that was, oh, well, that was kind of random. Penthouse? Yeah, that was yeah. very random. Yeah. In a scene it doesn't that doesn't lead anywhere. anywhere. The guy's he's got his nose in a penthouse magazine. <laughs> they come up and introduce themselves as police officers. The guy doesn't acknowledge them. They say we're Lieutenant, you know, Mortis. He is engrossed in that penthouse. Well, yeah. is he a zombie? Is that what we're going with on this? That's, that's why he didn't kinda, respond. That's what I was kind of feeling is that he was a zombie. That's why they weren't getting any reaction. He died out of him. pretty easily later on. I mean, I'm willing to go with the whole zombie thing because he was just kind of. Hmm. That's the only way that it would make any sense. There was no payoff to it. Yeah. The joke. It's like, okay, there's a guy with his nose in a penthouse magazine. They take the magazine down. They say, where is. Dr. So-and-so, mm-hmm. and then Dr. So-and-so shows up, or at least the head of PR. The head of PR, yeah. Randy James. Randy. Yeah. 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 So this woman is now going to become, become basically the female lead in the movie. Yes. And she is Second a, a linchpin to the mystery of where these dead robbers have come from. The yes. undead yes. robbers have come from. Mm-hmm. She gives them a tour of the chemical factory. She stops off at the asphyxiation room. Oh, yes. <laughs> Natural part of the tour. Well, I mean, if, if you have an asphyxiation room, I, I mean, if you had one, I would expect you to show it off if I went over to your house. Yeah, I would Because that would so. be a center centerpiece, I would think. It's that like, would be an Here is the room. Be like, you we... don't want to stand in this room. <laughs> yeah. This is where I kill my cats. Yeah. <laughs> be careful. Oh, Whatever you do, don't go in this room. <laughs> don't go into these easily accessible from the lobby rooms. <laughs> this is not the bathroom. They're very dangerous. <laughs> uh-huh. Oi. This is the room where we suck all the yeah. What are the for the they where they kill humanely uh, animals? But the room is clearly big enough to hold like a platoon, right? It's yeah, not like um, you know. Well, in case you got to put a, a bowl in there or something, <laughs> a bowl in a china shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, that'll make sense later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once we, once we get to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's a door uh, marked uh, hazardous chemicals. Please do not enter. Mm-hmm. And so Joe Piscopo and actually Joe enters. Piscopo enters. Well, Obviously. I mean, you know, that's <laughs> the thing. If you have one of these places, which is uh, you know where you're keeping your most closely guarded secrets, yes, right. I mean, according to the movies, the best way to get into these places is just take a, a metal piece of metal and shove it into the uh, <laughs> yeah. short the yeah. card reader. That's yeah. high if we've security. learned anything from these movies, you can either short it out or shoot it, and that will open the door. Oh yeah, yeah. If you just shoot it. Right. Everything goes. But there's it. also the, you don't need search warrants because that would just slow you down and yeah. we're no. men of action and we have to get, I mean, there was. A, they were the, invited in. They're they, just like, I'll take you around. Yeah. There's nothing in this movie where it's kind of. Uh, By the book at all? Well, no. without any kind of real world consequences. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, to say the least. Would you yeah. really <laughs> expect it out of this movie though? <laughs> well, I think, it, but it also <laughs> kind of came from the eighties. There was something, I mean, you go back and look at like Rambo or Cobra or Commando. I God mean, Commando is a good example for yes. this, right? Yeah. I mean, there's shit going on that like, you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> these, are, these are some type of like very muscular male fantasy films where you just go in and, Fuck shit up everywhere, and yeah. everybody applauds you for it. When you're right, done. except for yeah. your black uh, police captain who yells at you later on. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, in every movie, yeah. every movie yeah. happened mm-hmm. in this one. He wants well, your a damn movie badges. Called Prisoners. You seen this with Jake Gyllenhaal? Don't say anything about it because yes. I haven't watched it yet. Don't give it away. I'm not giving it away. Okay. There's one scene. Is there? Where there's a scene where the cop has to go into the 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 detective the captain's office. But it plays the other way around. The cop comes in yelling at the detective. Or, yeah. Sorry, yelling the at the and captain. captain. Nice. Yeah. And I was like, this is a pretty good switch on this convention. Uh, I like that movie. Know, convention. It's yeah. a good movie. Good so, this movie. <laughs> so this movie. So this movie. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, Outside, oh, the, the Dangerous Chemicals. Dangerous movie. Chemicals. Short Circuit enters freely after the door opens like a foot. Uh, but he just wanders in looking at a, a giant machine in this room with uh, something big covered oh, in a tarp in the middle. This is where they hide the giant machine. <laughs> this is where they uh, hide yeah. the giant machine. Company, right? And yeah. what's under this tarp? Bed. What? What's An under the tarp? An of some sort? <laughs> I don't know what this happened to this yeah. man. It has like three faces yeah, fused was, together. Was those three face faces together. that were sewn together? Yeah, yeah, it was kind of weird. I mean, just like looking at it because it's fast moving, you know, and the mm-hmm. yeah. shots that they... And I'm like, am I glitching <laughs> in, you know, just looking at it? It looks like there's like at least three noses in yeah. there. Three faces, but they were the same face. I feel like yeah. they had a motorcycle the accident, and they just tried to sew them back together. And right. they came up with somehow two additional notes? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Because you can't have a reanimated uh, criminal wandering around with 
missing parts of his face. And he face. had this huge blow to this gut on him. Mm-hmm. He's huge. Well, because you're expecting at some point the thing's going to pop. Yeah. And, well, you know. th- that's what I was waiting for because uh, I, I play this game. It's called Left 4 Dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one right. of the zombies <laughs> in, in that game are like exploding zombies and they have these big guts and all that. That's yeah. what it kind of reminds me of. Belcher? Belchers, yeah. yeah I, I think yeah, that's, that's what they're right. called. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. And I was waiting for them to explode. The guys who made that movie probably, or sorry, made that game probably saw this movie. No, oh, it's, it's very similar. It's, I don't you know, know if anybody's covered seen it. In this movie. <laughs> I think it's safe to say if you see a zombie with a big, huge, bloated gut, you assume that it's probably going to blow up. Oh, I, I mean, thought you said a- you assume that they got their inspiration from Dead Heat. No. no, nobody got <laughs> here. Right. Nobody was inspired by Dead Heat. I saw. I've seen that on Walking Dead too, with the bloated gut, and it does explode oh. in some capacity. Yeah, nice. Yeah, as they do, as they do. A yeah. nice makeup or not? I think so. I, I thought it was yeah, decent. Yeah. I thought as far it was as this movie goes, I give. Uh, I give a thumbs up to. I give it about a, yeah. a B plus, maybe an A minus. It's pretty good. It was, was decent. Yeah. Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson was, uh, responsible for it. I think we talked about him before. From the era, you know, doing a lot of these fantasy horror films, mm-hmm. he was yes. a he was a staple. Is he the biggest star associated with this movie? No, it would be <sighs> Treat Williams or Joe Piscopo. But I mean, like to the Fangoria audience, yes. that was reading it was you know they're seeing like it myself. For that. Yeah, it was like oh, it's new Steve Johnson makeups or whatever. Yes, a new Steve Johnson movie. Yeah, I don't know. They have like a the, the you know again we're talking about these practical effects, which now you can kind of read as. Um, what would you say? Like, they, I mean, there's a certain cheesiness to them, sure. right? Because, like, no. you know, when somebody, when there's a body melt, you know, uh, there's a series of dissolves or cutaways and things go gloppy and fall on the floor yes. bits and pieces and they smoke. Like, there's some oh, kind they of dry ice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and little bubbles popping up in the... Bloop, bloop, yep. bloop, bloop. And wow. But this is something I don't think that we get to see a lot anymore. So whenever I see this kind of stuff, I'm nostalgic for it. But I don't know if it's necessarily just nostalgic because it's I mean, good, man, cool. Man, or if it's just nostalgia, yeah. Mm. I don't know. It, I'm, I'm say, sure I'd that say definitely nostalgia. has something yeah. to do with yeah. it. Yeah, because you're watching yeah. it, and you're like, "That looks bad." <laughs> yeah, it looks bad, but or you yeah. can you can identify it as bad, but you can still enjoy it. Yeah. Obviously, mm-hmm. I mean, you can. Yeah. I mean, that should be just the line for this movie. You can identify it as bad, <laughs> but you can still enjoy it. <laughs> that could yeah. be the line for most movies we watch. Uh, most of the, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it should just be the subtitle. Yeah. Welcome Saturday Night to the Saturday Night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. So what is this gigantic machine that they have in the the, the chemical room? Well, as the characters figure out right away, Immediately. without any yeah, information right? otherwise. This is how they're bringing people back from the dead. It brings people back from the dead. Well, to be clear, this is the coroner, right? This isn't coroner. This is the coroner. Smithers. Becca, yeah. Yes. She somehow puts all this together. She, hits, she, after she turns the computer buttons. on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> after hitting two buttons, she figures it all out. Now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does nobody lock down a place where there's just been a mass shooting and zombie attack? Like, they shot the security guard at the front desk. He's yeah. dead. The cop, uh, Treat Williams, died. Wait, how'd he die? You skipped he got, right over there. Oh, we did. Well, they skipped over everything else in this movie, <laughs> so I'm going to skip over his death. Obviously, he died in the asphyxiation <laughs> chamber. <laughs> I can't say it. Oh, that's, <laughs> no, wait, that's why we brought Thank that you. up earlier. Uh, yeah. Ah, yeah, uh, okay. foreshadowing. <laughs> but Sorry. told you it was important. Sorry, in, I've been drinking. Like, in the, in the fight that Joe Piscopo has with the giant pig man... Uh, Treat Williams gets knocked into yeah. the open door asphyxiation room. I don't know why it's open at that point. It's a time lock. No, uh, I don't know. It's uh, something. It got, oh, shot, it, got, it got shot by, uh, by a bullet, didn't it? Did it? Well, let's go with yes. Okay. Because <laughs> otherwise we can't. Let's not investigate it. Okay. it. There, was, there was a ruckus. The door opened. I don't know. Yep. That's what ruckuses do. Yeah. Uh, they were going to kill a the dog. There was a dog out there in a cage. No. The dog's fine. I don't know why it's, it's open. <laughs> dog's fine. So dog's no animals fine. were injured in this movie? No. Uh, but he gets thrown in there, and the door locks while Joe Piscopo is still fighting the giant pig man. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and it slowly just depressurizes him and kills Street One. And this is the one time they can't short a circuit and open the door. Yeah. The yeah, one time. Can't do it. I know, right? Never can't would you need it. it. Never yeah. would you think to try and shoot the glass. He's got guns <laughs> laying around. Yeah. He just got to bang it and, and cry and have uh-huh. his uh, Spock. Because you would think if Kirk you shot moment. it, you would have a big explosion, though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no gas. I mean, I, no, the pressure it, and everything. Yeah, but air pressure. Well, still, I mean, his, his head, head would explode. explode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very true. Uh, true. Yes. Very true. Do, oh man. Oh, oh yeah. Sense. That's the go. that's the line they out. stopped on. <laughs> right. That's where they stopped. We're breaking down right. physics for <laughs> dead heat. I know what this movie is, but there's certain lines clearly we cannot de- cross. Clearly, dead heat did their research. This is one of them. Obviously, he'll die. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, they bring it. So, yeah, the coroner uh, just like. Uh, Joe Piscopo was crushed by well, Trudy Williams' death. Yeah, when you may have been his partner since training. At the police academy. It's the reaction that we expect and want, unlike I mean, later really on. Is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow, Joe Piscopo should have been pissed for the way everybody else reacted to what happens to him. Right? Yeah. We'll get to it. Considering. <laughs> Spoiler alert. But anyway, they immediately decide to uh, put Treat Williams onto the machine. No second thoughts. No, none at all. This the, and I, it can't be said enough. The short time gap between them discovering the machine to them discovering what it does and then putting Treat Williams in it. Yeah. Discovering what it does. I like the way. You think. <laughs> yeah. Right. Theorizing what it yeah. does and putting Treat Williams in there to try it out. It is like it. It's no characters should make this leap. Yeah. <laughs> like she's basically saying, I think this is, and while she's figuring it out, Joe Pisco is dragging <laughs> him to you the know machine. What this does? <laughs> Way ahead of you, Doc. <laughs> Shove him on there. Let's throw him up on here and get this thing fired up. Yeah. And so they electrocute uh, uh, Roger Mortis for like five minutes. Roger yeah. Mortis. And bring him back to life. And then the doctor goes, Oh, but wait, there's a horrible side effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To you being brought back to life, you're going to decay at a rapid rate, and you've only got 12 hours, probably, to live. Yeah. He takes this very hard, I think. No, not at all. Actually, he takes it he completely in stride. Right? He feels great. Yeah. He's in like, that okay. deadpan Treat Williams way. There were yeah. a lot of... Yeah. <laughs> I'm a cop, and I've got a job to do, and I've got 12 hours to do this job. Yep. Straight face. Yeah. I'm going to find the person. Oh, because we <laughs> I forgot only, to. I only have 12 hours to live, but let's find this guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, the guy that they're looking for, we forgot to mention, yeah. is the guy. We do see oh. a black gloved hand throw the switch to depressurize the room. Yes. yes. That Someone him. does so kill he him. He was murdered. He was murdered. Yes. Yeah. Not an accident. Murdered. 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 Now he's going to have to solve his own. Because Murder. he can't keep a good cop dead. Dun, 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 dun. Is that yeah. the tagline? <laughs> dead heat. <laughs> There's a theme song at the end. When the song came up during the credits, we were sitting there going, like, please let this be the dead of heat course. theme song. And it was. Yes. <laughs> yep. Need someone to write the song. It's the yep. 80s. It's what we do. Yep. They need to put Mondo needs to do the soundtrack album. Dead heat. Dead yeah. Heat. Just one song on five times on the front of the album. So this is where the movie slows down and becomes heavily dramatic and in the investigation of, like, if you only have so much time to live, right. what would you do with Right, it explores kind life? of, like, what a man's thought on mortality <laughs> yeah. and what you do with your life and the meaning of what your life is. Because life earlier, you've lived. earlier in the car, Joe Piscopo suggests the idea, what if you knew your death date, what would you do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Foreshadowing mm-hmm. this very situation. Yeah. He would throw a party, by the way. Well, I'm still amazed that you were able to say all that with a straight face. Because the movie doesn't have time. Oh, it doesn't go that way at all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, listener. I apologize if I misled you at all. That is not what happens. No. At all. No. We have to have more uh, makeup effects. Of course. In a scene that's not too bad. So they end up going to, they discover that the chemical is also being purchased by a uh, Chinese restaurant. In San Francisco Chinatown. No, no. First they go and get yeah. They gotta go Randy. to, to Randy. Oh shit! Apartment. Sorry. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Don't jump ahead yet. Okay. They gotta go get Randy because uh, Randy. when she's the shooting the started, she's she just, the key. She's the linchpin. Yes. As they said, <laughs> the linchpin. Yes. Uh-huh. As soon as the shooting started, she ran off and got away. So once they've decided, uh, accepted, I should say, accepted that Treat Williams is a dead man walking. Yeah. Yes, the characters in this world have accepted this. <laughs> and there are many jokes made at his expense. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, because that's what you do to keep the mood light. It's basically, well, that's done. Next. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, you're dead. Let's right. go find Randy. So now they say they have to find the man who did this to them. Mm-hmm. That did this to him. Yeah. So they go over to uh, Randy's house, find her trying to escape in her car, drag her back We inside. know that she's leaving because she packed an extra pair of panties in her purse. Yep. Yeah. Joe Piscopo explains it all. Detective work. White and uh-huh. lacy pants. I mean, somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Uh, what? What did they? They get into the conversation, and uh, then someone starts shooting through the back. Videotape. Door. The videotape. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to explain it all in this videotape. Except they explain nothing. <laughs> no. Vincent Price Vincent shows Price. up as an old man on the videotape, and I'm like, is this going to be Vincent Price's only scene in the movie? Don't He's tell me this is his last movie. <laughs> no, he still uh, had Edward, Edward Scissorhands, Scissorhands to do. I think it was. His, oh Jesus! Yeah. About that. Yeah. Yeah, he did a bunch of crappy, crappy movies in the 80s, like The Offspring and other stuff that you haven't heard. In between, bookended by, like, you know, Thriller and mm-hmm. Edward Scissorhands. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah, so uh, uh, Vincent Price plays a character who we're introduced to as Randy's father. Uh, what's his name? Love Milk? Louder Milk. Louder Milk. Louder Milk. Louder Milk. Alfred P. Louder Milk? Yeah. A rich fellow who may or may not be involved in some type of corporation that has some tie to this uh, bringing this. Uh, uh, the resurrection of the dead. Yes. Bringing people back to life. Yeah, the technology, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then the guy's busting in and then, shooting because we don't want too much, you know, we got to parse this stuff out. Right, yeah, you can't just give it to us all at once. So this yeah. is the, the fucked up looking, uh, the two hitmen. Yeah, the two yeah. zombie hitmen who, who everybody's got an Uzi in this movie. It was the gun of the 80s and 90s. <laughs> yeah. I think so. It, yeah, it was. There was cocaine and Uzi, Sean. It was That's a glorious, a glorious, glorious, with, glorious with day. Infinite number of bullets. Yeah. <laughs> because it's an Uzi. Never. Have you seen the clips on those things? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's only got to be like... It sticks way out the bottom. It really does. All right, I won't argue. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) But they bust through the back window, and uh, everybody's also a horrible shot in this movie, because it's like, and everyone dives out of the way, and they're shooting back at them, and and, uh, Joe Piscopo jokes are made at some point. But they dive in the back of the couch, and the guys, the, the way they shoot, I mean, they're just, they could shoot the couch... But they're just like shooting yeah. at the back wall at this point. <laughs> yeah, because like, they're it's the 80s, horrible you zombie shoot hitmen. You shoot books in the eighties, right? You yeah. have to have do. like the it's, character running away, and it's not a lead lined couch or something like that. It's steel, you know. It's That's a, how they it's used to couch. make them back but in the day. Awesome. They were, <laughs> couches were made of steel. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was a fold out bed. Okay, I'll give you that. Or at least like a fucking recliner. Uh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they had steel right. And yeah. The best and part, though, is when they hit Treat Williams. <laughs> he hits the ground, gets back up, and while he's running away, he's getting tagged again he in the back. He is. It's yeah. good. <laughs> the squibs are exploding all over. Oh, it's <laughs> just a guy who has avoided being shot for his entire adult life as a professional police officer. But the moment that he's dead... How else do we get to show off his amazing dead superpowers? He's got to get shot like it's so many, yeah. many yeah, times. Many times. So he does. He, but he does. also cuts himself at some point and doesn't bleed. Oh my God. But it plays really fast <laughs> and loose with like the consistency of the state of deadness because it does. he cuts himself in an artery. It doesn't bleed. Oh my God, I'm dead. He also and barely bangs into a fucking beaker. Yeah, that was yeah. good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, but then there, with the back of his hand, but there's a gouge in his <laughs> wrist. Yeah, well, yep. glass is sharp. What do you want? It's like razors. Uh, but then he gets <laughs> shot. I don't know. With the Uzi <laughs> and blood's exploding out of him. Like, yeah, okay. Oh, that's great. We've established that he has no heartbeat. Or no heartbeat. Has. No yeah. heartbeat. Yeah. They so all there's tracked. no blood being pumped or nothing. No. So it's just yeah. kind of but yeah, he's bleeding out, out of all these bullet holes. Yes. Well, he's still got blood in him. Maybe it just wants to, it's inside you and it just wants to get out. I think so. So as soon as you puncture the pressure, it's, oh, okay. Yes. <clears throat> this is going to be for my vampire movie. Oh, not, <laughs> so, not Snowman? <laughs> yeah. Can, can Snowman be a vampire? Can be a <gasps> Why not? Snowman vampire? Snowman is a vampire. Why not? Oh my <laughs> God. He's a vamp, wait, no, he's a vampire, but he can't participate in the sucking of blood because it's warm and he will melt. And this is <laughs> and this is the crux of the problem that he's facing in his life. Done. Yeah, uh, no, copyright no. 2016 Saturday Night Freaks. All right. Then. Genius. I'm trying to wrap my head around that. But okay, so they get 2017. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's true. <laughs> so, so they enlist Randy in their uh pl- their investigation to try and find out if yes. mm-hmm. nefarious people are the puppet masters pulling the strings on all this. Well, all right. They do. Um but they still have to escape the two zombie hitmen. Well, yeah. Well, you so, do that by hiding underwater and popping up and like, I can hold my breath forever because yeah. I'm dead. It's Very true. Dabbing yeah. him with an umbrella. Yeah. 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 Is that the last we saw him, that guy? Yeah. I thought he was swimming yeah. away. No. no, no. Uh, he, he tried and then he went down. Again, this is why it's it's an inconsistent kind of thing. Like yes. some people can be shot a million times and <laughs> keep coming at you. Some people, you stab them with a uh, like a lawn umbrella. Yeah. And yeah. they're down. And they're down. Yeah. I get the I electrocuting thought, thing, though. But I thought that was maybe going to come in later. I thought maybe here we're seeing, like, a key to how you actually stop these guys. Yes. If you can plug them full of holes and nothing happens, but you throw a stereo into a pool with you one of them, them and you electrocute right. it, then I'm like, they're going to make some kind of weapon. Yes! That's gonna... Later on, they would gear up with electronic stuff to electrocute <laughs> the zombies to easily get past them. No! That doesn't happen. Does not happen. Yeah. There's a lot more shooting in this movie, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, a lot more. A lot more. <clears throat> so they escape them. And then they go to the China shop. China shop is okay. the next one, okay. So the China shop is kind of amusing from, as a sequence in the movie because yes. you know, it has... Uh, uh, inexplicability. Well, we, right. Because we find out, well, Professor, what is it, Ken Tanaka? 
Whatever the big, he's like oh, a wrestler. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's been in a bunch of movies that I can't remember right now, but it seems yeah. like Three Ninjas, Big that's Trouble in Little China, and Three Ninjas. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's so. the breadth of his work. Right there. <laughs> that's the range Probably he has. Enter the Dragon. He is uh, with one of those big butcher knives, like carving coming up, up a, a duck. Poor duck. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Key Luke, who Key Luke, played yes. the uh, the Asian guy, the shop owner, sold, yeah, in, in uh, Gremlins. Gremlins. Yes. Yeah. He plays the Chinese shop. Oh, it's very stereotypical. I mean, <laughs> but yeah. hey, you get what work you can at some point. Yeah. But it turns out that this guy is, a, they go there just like, what, did you, what are you ordering all this chemical for? But it turns out that this guy has one of these machines like built into the lamp, the chandelier. The chandelier, yeah. Of his restaurant, or at least wherever the back room, the kitchen of the restaurant. I don't really know. Why? Was- Why? Because Why? He's been, he developed the technology. No. With secret... Eastern, uh, you, you know, racist like, ancient son Chinese of a bitch. Is it's that what you're case. saying? No. Yeah. Cops come to his shop one day and he needs to light the place up. No. <laughs> Uh, None of this makes okay, sense. So maybe he wants to. He has uh, okay. So it's something to do with the freshness of the meat that he's doing. Whatever. <laughs> reanimating as a distraction, so he can escape. Reanimating every single piece of food, freshly killed yeah. animals, as they are. Yes. In the restaurant. Every Some of, of these meat. are awesome. Awesome. There's a, there's a boar. There's ducks hanging up. There's who, ducks everywhere. Who, who go wah, 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 <laughs> when they're crowding around <laughs> Randy. <laughs> I mean, I feel like uh, the, the ducks are like subjugated too, so they're getting their revenge. <laughs> like they're, they've been Is killed that what and they made, killed and made to eat. And I think they're trying, maybe they're trying to eat everybody in there. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what their end game was. They're just know. crowding around him. They are really just attacking him, and Tree Williams gets attacked by what? What did you figure out? It, it was a flying liver. I thought it was a squid. No, it was a liver. No limbs, just a big, juicy <laughs> liver. It, it was it like rolled out of the package. Yeah. And just kind of loop, 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 loop. Yeah. Just it was in butcher stuck. paper package <laughs> ready for your crock pot. No. Yeah. Butchered. Liver and it just flies. Well, flies I mean, it flies. Face. They suction. They, right they jump. <laughs> liver alone. Yeah, we got uh, liver little, alone. The, uh, barbecue pig attacks. Uh, Joe Piscopo. Joe Piscopo. Yeah. There's fish that are flopping their heads around. Yeah, that yeah. have yeah. come back to life on but ice. The, the coup de gras. The piste de resistance. There you go. Oh, the piste de resistance. <laughs> Is the gigantic from the deep freeze <laughs> emerges? Yeah, uh, what, Colin? Uh, it's like a. Uh, a uh, a bull. A, a, a side bull? of beef. A it, it's it's two sides of yeah. beef. It came out like... It scratches going, at the ground like a bull. Like a bull. <laughs> yeah. So it was about to charge like yeah. a man. I feel it, it was. Hence, yeah. hence our bull in a china shop. I mean, mm. really bull is. in a china shop. <laughs> I feel like we've made that joke before recently. <laughs> Foreshadowing. See, oh, oh, we know how to tell yep. a story. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. So that one, does that one attack Joe Piscopo as well? Doesn't it like try no, to... that one's after, that, treat, that, after, after he gets, gets the liver off of his face? stuck in the rib cage of the thing. Right. Yeah. And then yeah, Joe I takes think... the meat hook and gets him in the back. Oh, right, yeah, right, that's right. 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 Joe saves yes. the day. Yeah, it's fantastic. And then they shoot out the weird Device. chandelier. Is that the part where... Do they shoot the, the, the big butcher dude and he goes down after one shot and he's oh, just right. like, well, not everyone's hey, a zombie. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This wasn't where that. the woman had the, or what Treat Williams had that line. Oh, after all that. Was it after yeah. all that? <laughs> yeah. What after they get to that. I, I, you you got to be careful or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot like, what she says. Careful. I'm dead. dead. No, he's, he's like, lady, I'm fucking dead. Yeah, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> 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 <Da-da-da>. <laughs> <Da-da-da>. <laughs> Rim shut. Uh, possibly the best sequence in the movie. I mean, it was fantastic. The top yeah. three. Yeah, no, as, far as, I mean, uh, as far as you're going to see these, I guess, for like the makeup effects shenanigans, right? And the yeah. comedy of Joe Piscopo. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it was a big drawback then that he yeah. is. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, as far as the articulation of this is where they spent like a considerable amount of money, it seems to bring all of these food items to life. But the 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 uh, the Asian shop owner gets away. He does. He, he runs does. away through the back door. Yeah. yeah. So where does this lead them then? I mean, where are they in their investigation now? They know that something is screwy with this guy. He's somehow connected to Dante Pharmaceuticals or whatever. Yes. So I think it. They need to visit the grave. Is that where that right? Comes so they, play? Split up. They, they split yeah. up. They split up. Yeah. So Treat Williams is going to take Randy, Randy, yeah. to go visit him. the mausoleum. To go see her supposed father, Vincent Price, Lauder, to make sure that Lauder, he's Lauder, dead. No. What were they going there for? I don't know. I don't. Okay, clues? we don't know. And <laughs> was there something about she's really not his daughter? 
They find that yeah. out at the at, mausoleum. At the mausoleum, okay. yeah. Because yeah. he's a better detective than we are. Yeah. So, you know, Randy, tell me, you're not really his daughter. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what? I don't yeah. know how he guessed this. I don't know Because he's a, on the, on the uh, monument, it says, beloved husband. Oh, right. It right. says nothing about There's father. There's a reason for everything in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it very clear to us what's going on. Mm-hmm. But, but the part that I don't get, and it threw me off watching it, was while they're in the mausoleum, He's like, there's got to be a sign or something around here. And he looks in the lamp. Why would you think all this? all places. And <laughs> Why would you think this? Written in blood. What, a set of numbers, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. numbers. I, I, don't, uh, I don't. These dots are so the, far apart. The only How thing, is he putting them together? The only thing I can gather is he's looking at the things on that little table. He picks sure. up He picks up the phone, looks at it, which the phone line was cut. I don't. Did you Why is there that? a phone in a mausoleum? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because the guy wants to get, he's a rich guy. He wants to get buried with all of his, like, you can't take it room, with you, right? Colin. But he's, he's looking at the, the items on this podium, and he looks at the lamp, and the writing is on the inside of the lamp facing you. Yeah. So he would have seen it if he looked at the lamp. But the thing you, is, is that who would write that to begin with? Why okay. would right, who did well, write? Well, this who is did the question. Write that? That's right. where I'm confused. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> because knowing what we, we don't want to jump ahead too much, listener. In case you're no, you know, no. listening, to this we have to parse this out podcast. to not spoil anything until we get to it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. There's no one who could have left that message because the message, it turns out, is uh, you can decipher it with a phone, keyboard, use the number or the letters keep, yeah, the keyboard, and yeah. spell out Numbers the letters. identity. Numbers to letters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that was another good one. It's, I'm just going to stare at a phone and like, oh my God, the light bulb goes off. This is the key. His dead brain to figured the, it out. To decipher, yeah. The so same key go. I used in middle school to write notes to my friends. Mm-hmm. The so who left this note? We <laughs> have no good suspects for this. And there's because no the reason. Person, so if it is a uh, Lager Hoffen, uh, Hoffen Lager, Stotter, Lager milk, Lager milk. If it's Lager milk, left the message, right? Yeah. yeah. Knowing what we know about him from the it end makes of the no movie, sense. Why would he direct? It? Yeah, it makes to, absolutely to no the sense. the person he's in cahoots with. Why would he leave that? Who would leave that? I can't explain. Nobody. That. I can't no, answer I, this, Sean. I can't. In a locked ma- mausoleum mm-hmm. of all things, yeah. To have that, I don't get it. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's <laughs> perplexing. Clue, or number eighteen. Turn of event number eighteen. <laughs> the next thing that happens is because Joe Piscopo said he was going to go after Laudermilk's Milk's lawyer, mm-hmm. a character yes. we've not been introduced to nope. at this point in the film, right? So, I guess they're going to go and meet up with Joe Piscopo at Back this point? at her place. Yeah. Back at Randy's place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Later on the, the window is still broken, so that's why yes. I'm like, okay, this is her house. Yes. They go in there, it's all dark. Joe her lights don't work. There, yeah. And they find a body hanging upside down, submerged Immer- yeah. in a fish tank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the body's badly, you know, swollen and decomposed. And we're like, well, who the fuck is that? It took us a is minute. Is that the lawyer? Yeah. <laughs> and then the jacket is what gave it away. We're like, wait, it's Joe Piscopo. Yeah. 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 It's like the movie totally, like, lost its shit. That's <laughs> it and it, it was did. just like, what the hell's going on now? Well, yeah. we're wondering, I mean, not since, like, No Country for Old Men has there been Dear a moment Lord, where a... Get off that <laughs> movie's dick, all right? <laughs> where a uh, character, his fate happens off screen. I don't understand what... There's no shock effect. Why well, is there supposed to be... You're supposed to be shocked that, oh, my God, Joe Piscopo's dead. We didn't get to see I him mean, get killed. We were shocked. Yeah, we, were shocked. Yeah, we were shocked. Confused. Yeah, we were shocked. More than it's anything. confusion. Yes. Yeah, this, shocked. At, the, at this point, you're only what about halfway? You know what? Three, it's like three, 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 about three quarters. Yeah, yeah, three the, quarters, three quarters, quarters of the movie through. through the movie, and it's just like what? And he's gone. Right. It's one of those moments yeah. where you feel like, did Joe Piscopo get in? Is like, I don't know, was he an egotistical guy? He got into fights with somebody behind the scenes, and they said, you know what, Joe, you're off the fucking movie. You're fired. He was like, I need to get off this movie, Marty. Get me off this movie. To his agent, <laughs> Marty, <laughs> and they got him. Off. And they, it's an old Jewish man. <laughs> because it's Hollywood. Jews are in Hollywood, right, Holly? Right. Oh, oh. And, like, uh, isn't that what you said earlier? Off mic. <laughs> all so, I said was I thought there was someone named Rosenberg involved uh, with this movie. That's all I said. I think yeah. he's the producer. Thank you. So 
And, but I guess that's the thing. It's like they have to fucking write Joe Piscopo out of this movie, and so they just put. A... He seems like such a likable guy. <laughs> yeah. See, and my first thought, I and so I was like, well, his death's going to come into play later on. I mean, obviously, that's, like at this point, I mean, we all, all thought that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's he's, it. like Joe Piscopo is not gone. He's Wait, too right. much. Could he's you make it more national obvious? Treasure. Could you make it more obvious <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. get him out of this movie? You have to have because if you're going to do it right. Uh, aspiring screenwriters mm-hmm. you have to actually show the guy get killed to have a finality to his death otherwise yeah. Yeah. there's a, you know we well, know it's unresolved and th- he's going to come back later in the mm-hmm. movie right or at least show him like showing up at the place like oh I made it here before everybody else and have him get like dragged off screen or something yeah. hit you over the head something. Yeah. something something yeah. some kind of finality yeah. to it but no it's a so, pan to the back of the head. An inexplicable scene happens immediately following that. Uh, well, a, also. A, a very well put together uh, Treat Williams at this point shows uh, no, no remorse emotion of his he partner. He likes to fluctuate. I mean, he between is dead. Being he well, is dead. So we're just going to use that he, as the explanation. He's yeah. dead, so he's, he's dead, dead inside. He's got no so, emotions. So, so, his heart. He has dead. no heart. He, he's dead inside. He yeah. Pull him out and yeah. wrap his no body up. And, yeah. <laughs> Then, so it's then, his partner. It was his partner. <laughs> so he, Nothing. he should be showing some kind of... Something. Yeah. Joe Piscopo cried for him when he died. Treat Williams. He's a movie star. I mean, you expect <sighs> he more. just He just walks in. <laughs> he also walks it's into him. the bathroom it's after Randy has had a shower. She's sitting there in a towel combing her hair. And, and they've like, known oh, each other for like... Knock or whatever. Yeah, hours. Right. I'm like, like, I'm like, oh, here comes the explicit sex scene. Yeah, well, I'm this like, is where we find out Ken's woman <laughs> still, you know. This, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, she's going to have sex with a dead guy. Yeah. <laughs> this is what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. But no. But no. Something Another... much more shocking. What a twist. Two twists. Yeah. The first twist is Randy just reveals not only was, you know, she not uh, Laudermilk's daughter. I think no. she revealed that earlier. In the mausoleum, yeah. But apparently she's also dead. And you're like, What? Yeah. Out of the blue, oh yes, I'm dead. We've established the rules for you, Roger Mortis, that yes. you yeah. only have 12 hours to live. But me, as Randy, I get to live forever be- as long as I help them, because she's the spokesperson, mm-hmm. PR spokesperson for their company. Yeah. Yes. So somehow they do have the technology to extend the uh, lifespan of a dead they person. They lied to her, yes. mm-hmm. But they, they lied to her, they and lied so to she her. decomposes right in front of our fucking eyes the, right then and the there. was the stew metaphor that they had earlier, that they would just decompose into a stew. She stewed. Yep. She stewed. She decomposed slowly. Yep. She dripped. Yep. And the she whole, melted. And the whole Her time you guys off. are like, is this a dream sequence? It's <laughs> not like a dream sequence. It was out of nowhere. It was Because her head falls off. <laughs> <laughs> and it still talks. And it still <laughs> talks. <laughs> As it disintegrates. I'm sorry. Yeah. Very weird. It. And unexpected. <laughs> the weird. effects are that they did this in the movie. I like the effects. I like the effects. No. Okay, so you're not saying like that was a revolutionary plot twist. I did not see that. No, coming. that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did not. I did not see that coming. <laughs> it no, it but, was um, out of nowhere. It and was. Not, she was calling her agent trying to get out of the movie, and right. right, it was not strategically out of nowhere. It was just out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't know what to do with this character. We can't bring her into the final act. No, bye, Melter. Randy. Yeah. <laughs> So what That's are we going to do? a pretty cool melting scene, though. That's cool. Yeah, the, yeah, no, effects was, the effects on her hand, like... That was yeah. cool. Because it looked like it was still moving around. It didn't look like a lap design. Yeah. No, it didn't. It was so good. So I'm like, how are they doing that? This is before CGI, that was decent. obviously. Yeah, yeah that's that was pretty good. good. The little, like, pockets that opened up. Like, that, yeah. was, that was great. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, the blister, you know, that turned black. In the yeah. 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 Bravo, good. Steve Johnson. I hope this movie got you some work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. After, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Perhaps, man. Maybe on so. the demo reel. Probably. Yeah. So this, of course, leaves Treat Williams with nowhere to go except full on commando slash Rambo slash vengeful cop mode. Which is where what we he's going to terminate her up. It really is. It feels yeah. like it. Yeah. Well, after he gets into, uh, there was, there's a moment where um, the bad guys get the upper hand on him and he gets handcuffed inside of uh, uh, an ambulance. Well, ambulance. this is where, after they die, he, this is where he figures out the yeah. whole numbers the on the phone. phone yeah. The body docker. Yeah, because he's going, he's, he's trying to call Rebecca, gets yeah. her message, and then he hangs it up and then he figures out body doc. For no reason, because nobody left this message, because it's dumb. Yeah, and that <laughs> happens to be the license plate of the Darren McGavin character, yep. the mm-hmm. medical examiner. Oh, my God, we've cracked the case. He's the guy who's behind it all. So go to back the to the morgue. We go to the morgue, but Darren McGavin, of course, has, uh, you know, it spills the beans, and there's that scene. 
It's but he hand. has a couple of zombie henchmen who get the best of Treat Williams and put him in this ambulance. This is what I'm building toward here is these moments, right, that you expect, hey, this guy is dead. And aside from being a human, uh, like, you know, target practice, sure. mm-hmm. right, <laughs> we'll that he it. should be able to do some kind of... <laughs> special you know, abilities to get out of sticky right. situations. Dislocate a thumb and pull it out of the cuffs or yeah. something like that. Which I or, thought that's where they were going with it, because in the ambulance, when he he's trying to like get to the steering wheel, his hand starts pulling, and I was right. like, he's going to pull his hand off. That's right. going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was happen. trying to crawl to like a saw or something. That would right, yeah, in, in the ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. Go full saw in his I, yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. But, but no, no, listener. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be too simple <laughs> and too easy. We need another set piece. Yeah, uh, the chase scene, because we yeah. haven't had that. <laughs> no, so we're going to have yeah. the car uh, stunt sequence where we're rolling down the San Francisco hills in a runaway ambulance, which is pushing another car, which apparently has no brakes. And apparently. going and going <laughs> remarkably straight. Into yeah. traffic <laughs> where it causes, he's like, this is going to be great. And it's you know, probably killing uh, innocent drivers yeah. you know, in the center section. But, he but they needed an explosion. Yeah! That uh, famous Tree Williams yell, <laughs> which if you didn't know is famous. <laughs> I always enjoy it. It's what I look forward to. I you're going to say it's sampled in a song or something. You're no. just being facetious. Uh, I mean, it should be famous but he after the does it a lot. There are some like moments where I'm, there's at least, you could put a small compilation together on YouTube. I feel, of Tree Williams yelling, I feel like I you could. I just can't think of one other instance where uh, it happened. I mean, it's got to be like Phantoms. <laughs> the, the Phantom. Phantom yeah. Where he's like, this is unbelievable! <laughs> yeah, and he's gone. So, at, so he you know, flips the fucking ambulance over. Which, by the way, Rebecca's already dead in the ambulance. Rebecca's dead. Oh yeah, another yeah. shocking plot development. Hey, your ex girlfriend or whatever, she's dead. Yeah. Everybody dies. Mm-hmm. Had to get her out of the way. She's dead already. Yeah. Yeah, Didn't need point, to show I'm, it. I'm thinking, man, everybody's gonna be brought back to life at the end of the movie, right? To, to make the that would be great. Yeah. 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 But he gets horribly burned. So this gives Steve Johnson another special effects moment to craft the basically the terminator version it really is. of uh mm-hmm. yeah the two-faced terminator yeah treat it, Williams. right because it looks like the terminator from part one after he gets hit by the right the yeah. fucking semi and half of his face is gone mm-hmm. and everything and then he gets on a motorcycle and looks more like the yeah. terminator yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's when he steals who the, edited what? the terminator mark goldblatt mark goldblatt <laughs> <laughs> what was that 84 yeah yeah, so it. See, he's just stealing <laughs> shit. He's stealing <laughs> shit from other shit he's done. But it was it's written smart by Terry man. Black. Well, smart they were in I'm sure. It worked. So this leads to a final showdown where we confront all the bad guys, where, of course, like when it's ultimately revealed, the bad guys are the rich guys who gather around the circular, you know, right. machine. Yeah. It's always the rich white people. And it, it is, always. Well, always. were they all white? I don't no, there was an Asian dude. That's right. They're just rich. <laughs> Yeah, Mother. rich makes you worse than anything in the movie really logic. Does. Does he because you think he can do anything. God, according to Vincent Price's character, God wants them to live forever, and if he if he if can't, he they can pay him off. We can pay him off. That's a, it's decent a good line. line. It's a good yeah. line. It's decent. Yeah, it's yeah. Good. He got he got some good licks in. Vincent Price did in this uh, in this scene in his big moment. Yeah. in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. he's still when, giving it when his we all. Realized like he's 100. not dead. Right? Yeah. That was the big that shocker. Was the moment, yeah. Not really. We knew that was yeah. coming, right? We yeah. knew he was the puppet master behind all this. And Darren McGavin and him are in on it. Mm-hmm. And Treat Williams comes in. Oh, there was oh, a you, scene you, with the... Oh, yeah, and I was saying, oh. do not pass that <laughs> oh. on. <laughs> Treat oh. Williams, in full Terminator mode, decides to infiltrate the morgue. <laughs> and so he's got his... Uh, Uzi, and which he stole from the security guards he killed up front, and he's mowing down security guards. As soon as they walk left in, and right. that's pure Looney Tunes. As soon as he walks, in. It, oh, oh yeah, because he, he's on the motorcycle and he's going up the little ramp, and he hits the chain and flies, flies off through the glass through doors, the glass. spins around, slides across the floor, shooting oh, yeah. the yeah. security guards in Fantastic. the process. Fantastic, yeah. amazing, amazing, <laughs> everything I wanted. Yes. Yeah, that's where he come. He gets his Uzi, and then he's just knocking off security guards one by one as he goes. And he runs into what can another. It has to be another zombie, <laughs> another yes. zombie standing guard who also has an Uzi. And it's one. It's one of the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it so much that they so did much. this, and for so long, <laughs> no, they, they didn't cut it too early. It was, it was almost. Perfect. Perfect. Where they both got Uzis and they're just standing there shooting each other and that whole jerky body (laughs) movement of getting shot and it goes on forever. It's glorious. 
<laughs> again, I didn't know I wanted it until I got it, and I loved it. It was so good. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that, it again. I do too. Good. Oh, so good. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, the movie is available on uh, Amazon and Vudu, I believe. Right now, listener, where well, you can rent it for three dollars, and we'll yeah. tell you at the end. And you can own it for seven. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so yeah, he takes out uh, the oh, uh, then the other joke. Well, they bring back Joe Piscopo. The As MVP. a demonstration of how the technology works. So Vincent Price showing this off to the other rich folks. Brings back Joe Piscopo. A far less bloated Joe Piscopo. But this, yeah, you know, yeah he's been right? healed and whatever. But this Joe Piscopo has uh, apparently been lobotomized or whatever. He's uh, yields to suggestion, and mm-hmm. they're using him basically as the muscle to kill that guy. It's because he was Treat dead Williams. for too long. That yeah, his brain damage. Yeah. Kill him, would you? Probably has <laughs> fish swimming around in his head. <laughs> Yes. So, yeah. So there's the. So this movie. What could have been the big showdown between, you know, the two reanimated yeah. leads becomes Treat Williams uh, appealing to Joe Piscopo's memory, like, remember, like, the I wore the lipstick. Yeah, that's another it scene. It brings out the color in your eyes. Yeah. And jogs his memory, and sure enough, it actually works with really no problem. Rhyme or reason, all. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just. And then Joe Piscopo and Treat Williams are able to kill. Darren McGavin. Because, However, oh. <laughs> also we we passed over the part where the most uh, unenthusiastic zombie oh. machine gun shooter. <laughs> also, a scene that takes forever. I because think that's Peter Kent and Arnold Schwarzenegger stand. Oh, really? I think it was. Oh, all right. Yeah, he's not. A, he was in Reanimator too. That would explain why he's expressionless. Guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but because uh, he's just shooting Treat Williams for five minutes, not moving, not dodging, just standing there, and it's uh, it's odd to say yeah. the least. What killed Darren McGavin? He did. He did. He killed, he killed himself. himself. Oh, that's right. You oh, guys are right. going to get me. Oh, how did you forget? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because he still thinks a machine gun will work, even though we've seen... Oh, my God. He uh, hired... He created the zombies, uh, right, with his company. Yeah. He sent the zombie robbers out to rob places in the jewelry store. He knows what they're them. capable of. He knows you can't take them down with a gun. Yet he still tries and is shocked when it doesn't <laughs> work on the two reanimated cops. Then he will not give them the satisfaction, so he... Offs himself. Yes. A bloodless shot through the head. Mm-hmm. And Which Treat himself. Williams is you, not happy about. No! no. <laughs> oh, God. What did you say? You, you did... robbed me! Yes! <laughs> no. He's so angry. And so we suggested to the movie at this point, well, you should throw them on the reanimation thing. Which they did. They Which literally they look did. at each yeah. other and look at the reanimator machine. That's it. That's the scene. It's fantastic. If it didn't go there, we would be disappointed. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> but they did. We're going to bring him back so we can kill him again. And have you ever seen what happens to a body when it's reanimated twice? <laughs> that was he pretty explodes. good. That was great. As Vincent Price cowers in a corner. Yeah. Don't need a body bag. You need a mop. At this point, <laughs> yeah. you do. Yeah. Because he's everywhere. Yeah. Yes. And then they uh, kind of walk off into well, heaven. Yeah, as... but they, they, well, but before that, the thing that I guess is like the technology has to be destroyed, right? Because you can't leave this around for just some kid to find. It. Right. Yeah. You got to destroy <laughs> right. it. Vincent Price is begging them, leave my machine, leave my, no. Because then we're also, by destroying the machine, that's a death sentence for the Vincent Price character. Because yes. apparently yeah. we're guessing, even though this isn't explicitly stated in the movie how this works, yeah. there must be some kind of additional jolts from the machine keep you going longer. Why the Treat Williams and Joe Piscopo characters don't want to do this right. and prolong their lifespan, I right. don't know. Doesn't but matter. okay. They destroy the machine because they're good guys. It's a moral thing to do. Yes. And then they walk off to heaven. Everybody else they yeah. know is dead. Like, hey, well, it's, it's a lot the same of work. death date. It's, right. Rose. Rose forever. Rose. Oh, yeah. It calls back to the bam. Yeah. Bam. It would turn into like Death Becomes Her if they all decided yeah. to like yeah. rejuvenate everybody who had died that they loved. Then they'd have to like try and figure out how to keep themselves together. Yeah. And they would slowly Maybe decompose. Robert Zemeckis saw this movie and said, hey, hey what if? This is a bad, What if? Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. There was like one moment of poignant, poignancy in the movie where Treat Williams, because it's like this is. You're so it's so easy for the characters to do this kind of you know whatever the mayhem yes because they have no attachments he's got this ex relationship we assume with the mortician yes uh, he doesn't really seem to be trying to pursue the relationship which seems like it's maybe sort of there because they're very catty towards each other the uh, the mortician and the oh, yeah. PR lady I forgot yeah. about that scene oh, the, yeah. the one yeah. scene Damn. where they're together. Yeah. Was it so you work here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a yeah. yeah, it's like what the hell? It's like Jeez. they're all fighting over Treatwood. You've known him one day. Yeah. 
Well, maybe he's just, you know, and, and true, being William. dead, he's got that. It is true. Yeah. You see that hair? I, no, it's true. Oh, my I get God. It. I get it. Yeah. That's like a pompadour or something. It's, it's glorious 80s hair. Is oh, it's saying. wonderful. It's majestic. But there's a moment where he's looking at, they're going through, you know, part of the investigation is looking through obituaries. And he does say something to the effect of, like, you know, they're probably writing my obituary now. And then he actually has oh. to stop and pull away from the investigation, go off the corner and have Shit. a moment. Where he's like, if they wrote my obituary, it'd be no wife. Husband to no one, father okay. to none. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so they're establishing the fact that basically this guy, there's nothing to be lost by him and his partner yeah. wandering. Around. We don't know what family life Joe Piscopo had. No, no, no. He's, he's a single. He a girlfriend he's like Joey from yeah. Friends. He's yeah, just... he did mention a girlfriend when he, the breathing underwater bit. Nope. These people don't have parents. <laughs> oh, right, right. Uncles, right, cousins, no, brothers, no siblings. You know, like, okay. can't think about that in a movie like no, this. Yeah. Married to their job. Yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, I just bring it up in passing. There it is. Is that you're saying? There it is. That's. That I mean, heat? I think that's it. They walk off into heaven. <laughs> dead heat. <laughs> dead heat. Yeah, and then the song. I think that's it. Oh, we yeah. get dead heat. The song, and uh, I mean, I think that's dead heat. All right. Well, there's not much else you could say about it. I'll tell you what, listener. Why don't you stick around? Because what we're going to do is we're going to go around the room, and we're each going to have our dead heat review, which I'm sure you want to hear, because some yes. of these are probably going to be gold. But because before that, listen thus far. We want to summon Igor, uh, our male demon. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Do you think he finds it rude that I clap for him? Like, is that rude to, like, summon him? Yeah. Be like, hey, come here now. Is that rude? <laughs> no. Or do you think, yeah. do you, or do you think Wait, he you wouldn't you want to come? ring a bell? I mean, do you think he wouldn't come if we didn't, like, hey, yo. It was kind chop, of chop, demanding chop, on him. I it feels. Saying. I feel bad about it now that I've thought about it. <laughs> All I right, think well, you got to keep it up. Though. All right, I think so. I mean, maybe yeah. he won't come. I next think time. he would feel left out if he maybe. didn't do it. You know, like that's your thing. All right. All right. Uh, so we're gonna rate some mail. The mail comes to us uh, on facebookcom slash Saturday Night Freak Show. That's our page over there, and on Twitter at Sat Freak Show, or by old fashioned email Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. We should hand that off to Holly. You should do that. Right. Maybe there should be a third. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, time. I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Responsibility. Point at you. Okay, and then uh, so yeah, we encourage you, uh, dear listener, to please write in, be part of the freak show family, because we'll read your comments on the air. We might like, even watch your movies at some point. That's also true. And that's the other thing too. If we didn't, if we don't watch your movie uh, in this, uh, because we're only picking four, yeah, don't be yeah. offended and don't freak out because we may be drawing from them as the year goes on. Mm-hmm. Maybe. We like the look of a lot of them. Yeah. Um. Okay, so first of all, Karate Warrior Two writes in nice. on Twitter, <laughs> and uh, just uh, uh, says, "I thought nothing could top the disaster that was Girlfriend from Hell." This was uh, an episode that we did a little while ago. He says, "I was wrong." There's a boyfriend from Hell. Oh. Currently available on the Warner Archive. Damn. <laughs> uh, I made a comment that, uh, uh, what was it? We were watching Krampus, and I said something to the effect that uh, Christmas Horror Story was a bad movie. Nick here uh, went and watched it. Yep. Nick's wife writes in and says, it was bad. LOL. Yeah, she didn't like it, but I, I didn't think it was too bad. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as you said it was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dom Cree writes in Hello, Dom. about tonight's movie because he picked it. Thank you, Dom. Thanks, Dom. He says, guys, guys, guys. Okay, so I'm editing this. He wrote like a paragraph. Sure. Uh, you know, a book. I'm <laughs> going to read this. Okay. He says, guys, guys, guys. I think we have officially have a winner for the worst listener's choice in freak show history because he watched the movie after... <laughs> We picked it. Oh. He said, I got to watch it. So he recommended it without having seen it? I think he saw it a long time ago. So he rewatched it? Maybe. I'm not sure. But he says, uh, it's the worst listener choice in Freak Show history. And of course, it had to be the first one ever. And it had to be mine. (laughs) 2.5 curly mulleted cheese ball piscopo shoehorn unintentionally funny unfunny one liners out of 85. He stole my review. I wish oh. this movie would. <laughs> oh, here you go. I wish this movie would self zip its own body. Oh, Whoa. bravo! Wow, Damn. Dom. Hello, Dom. 
Your well, own like, tick. Then why did you <laughs> wow. pick it? Wow. We were going to have start having a Kree's Corner or something like that, where we just go to Dom. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about this movie? It's just like reviews like that. He may earn his own spot in this podcast. That's like a ninja taking a sword to himself, being, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Harry <laughs> Carey. Harry, yeah. 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 If you want Dom's fuller review, go to the, our Facebook uh, page because the post is there. Um, he skewers it. Skewers it hard. Okay. So uh, I'm Colin. I'm the first one up. Colin. What did you think of Dead Heat? Dead you know, Heat. Dead Heat. <laughs> this is another case of where I think the experience of watching the movie is more fun than the movie itself. Like, the movie itself, this one, is pretty bad. I mean, like, the writing is terrible. Logic has no uh, place here, right? It, or it, it has it, no hold on it, at least. No. The acting is really bad. But the direction it? is really bad. The editing is really bad. There's, like, shots where it's like, okay, we finished this scene, so we cut over to Joe Piscopo looking off into the sunset. It really, well, that was a great <laughs> And edit. dissolved to whatever, and it's like, what the fuck is going on? The staging is all weird. I mean... As far as the actors go, I'd say, like, you know, Piscopo is, like, a decently charismatic actor, right? Uh, Vincent Price does not, like, chimp out on this no, thing. He doesn't waste no, it. Vince he Price, yeah. does, a, you know, he's, to his credit, does uh, what he can with the material. Darren McGavin is basically playing Darren McGavin. Yeah. Less Kolchak, more the uh, the dad from Christmas Indeed. story. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's like I got to give it demerits on writing. Uh, production value is pretty cheap, you know. Uh, but this makeup effects, the Steve Johnson stuff, I mean, would that be enough for you to, you know, to recommend that you watch it? I don't think so. I think this movie's hard to find. I think, you know, you're not going to find it anyway. Uh, <laughs> unless you go looking. There's probably a reason that you haven't heard of Dead Heat. Um, so, I don't know. I'm going to say you can skip it. I did not like the movie even though if you watch it half drunk with uh, a group of like-minded folks you know mystery science theater style it is a lot of fun that way but yeah. it is no classic and you probably won't ever want to see it again did you listen to the last hour that we talked about right? this movie oh yeah, yeah yeah no i know yeah. see this is why you yeah. stick around for wrap-ups because i was not expecting that <laughs> see there you go that's how uh, yeah. thought would be like Let's see it. <laughs> yeah, no, take I, that three ninety nine and go rent it. Yeah, no, because I can imagine them watching it. I, mean, I was like, <laughs> I, yeah, I wouldn't want to watch this. I don't think. Like it, it, the trailer lies to you. It, it looks like a fucking awesome. I don't know. Uh, okay, the well, trailer gives you you can't keep a good cop dead. I mean, come on. But it looks. I guess what I was expecting was that it would have a little bit more. I mean, even in these Coherence? movies, like yes, I think that's that's my biggest problem with it <laughs> is that it just didn't make sense according to its own fucking rules you know it's like sometimes even if it's a train wreck you're like well at least it's doing you know it's consistent or mm. something it's like you know it makes some kind of logical sense how scenes connect to each other at least or mm -hmm. why somebody is making the you know uh logical leap that they do but in this movie it's like pfft, <laughs> i just can't find the thread i mean you know they were just pulling shit out of the air when it needed to be uh plopped on the table so yep. um it is a decent high energy kind of thing. So, but yeah, I would say, and it's a tough one. Now you're making me rethink it. I'm just going to stick with it. I'm going to say no pass on dead heat. Hmm. Nick. All right. I, I love schlock movies. No, uh, I, I do. I do. Uh, but I don't know. This movie, <laughs> this movie was fun to watch with a bunch of people. Uh, but, oh God, it was bad. It was, it was bad. Uh, I almost wish the Joe Piscopal character would have been the zombie to begin with, because I think they would have had a little bit more fun with it that way. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, I, just, I, I think I would if I were like cruising Netflix or something. I just not even not Netflix, but uh, <laughs> cruising the bottom of whatever you're watching, Amazon or whatever. Uh, I probably would have come across it and probably would have watched it, seeing that, you know, booty cops, zombies, <laughs> uh -huh. 80s stank. Oh, yeah. I, I, I probably would have watched mm -hmm. it. Uh, but do I see myself watching it past tonight? No, I don't see it. And do I see people paying three ninety nine to rent it for 24 hours? No. No. So I would say I'd I'd pass on it. 
I I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. I'd watch it one time and then that's it. Okay, so plot holes aside, bad editing aside, bad directing aside, bad acting aside, <laughs> <laughs> bad story aside, <laughs> this movie is fantastic. It's hilarious. The makeup is on point. I thought it was great. The melting, the the the, the transition to zombie when it actually did happen, just fantastic. I loved the makeup. Great. The hilarity. The one-liners, Joe Piscopo, everything I expect from Joe Piscopo. Yeah, those it is. one-liners got He's, too much, though. But that's what he does. <laughs> I didn't even have a I'm a vegetarian. Sorry. Yeah, I, what, there was one but that, that's like, why it's funny. It's so bad. Else, like, it's so bad. Uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> and now if you multiply it by my girlfriend's weight. And I think it was a hard cut to something else. I think that was the joke. What's the jo- terrible. Uh, yeah. Terrible. The and joke everything, is fat, I think. <laughs> everything I expect from Joe Piscopo. Fantastic. I had so much fun with this movie. So much fun. I I, I, th- I think it was good that, that he played the, that he didn't play the zombie. I loved that the straight guy was the zombie, you know, that I think it needed to play that way. I had so much fun. I definitely recommend this movie for a good laugh. I will never say it's a good movie, but it's a fun movie. And I don't regret that three dollars that was just on my debit card <laughs> one little bit. <laughs> Oh, I don't regret it. All. I may, I may, so a couple I dollars more. Could it. See, I Did may, I may seven? pay you the other three dollars so you can have it forever, just in case we See? go back. Sean and I will watch this movie without you guys. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Dead heat. Colin said that he watched this trailer and that he didn't. Which you didn't get what you what it promised. It was, well, it. Pro- I thought it promised me a better movie than. The trailer was for a movie where a cop dies, gets brought back to life, and they have to find out who did it to him. I got everything that was promised in that trailer from this movie. Now, yeah, it's bad. Like, yes, but it's so... I don't know what it is. I liked the chemistry between Trey Williams and Joe Piscopo. I mean, he's got some bad one-liners, but they're pretty fun together. Yes. They were funny to me. Um, I, I mean, I really, I liked them. I liked, uh, like Holly said, the fact that Tree Williams is like the straight guy playing the zombie who got brought back to life. I, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was fun. I think you can watch this movie and get, uh, have fun with it. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, the effects are also great. Um, I think, I mean, I, we talked earlier about nostalgia being a big part of why we like something like this, but yeah. I mean, that doesn't mean, uh, yeah, I mean, that could be a hundred percent true, but you could still love it for that. Um, I got everything I wanted out of this movie based on what I thought it was going to be. So, and I think people watching this can get it too. I recommend it. I, I don't think I could not recommend this movie. This yeah. is, so, I, I had fun with this movie. So is it a $3 rental or a $7 buy? Uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, that's, it's. It's definitely a three dollar rental for sure. For sure, like that will not be three dollars you'll want back. That is well spent money on this movie. <laughs> I regret nothing. I, I don't. I don't. I would. I, I would pay for this movie. I would be like, that was that was worth it. That was worth the three dollar rental. Yeah, I recommend it. You should watch this movie. I liked it. I had fun. Dead heat. Good. Dead heat. I say I've been singing the song for the past like two hours. You've been singing two words. I know I could directly quote this movie to you, and I have been through this podcast. I recommend this movie. It was fun. All right. Well, that uh, wraps up Dead Heat. So next week we're going to continue our uh, listeners' choice marathon mm. with Holly's pick. Oh no, Holly, what are we watching next week? Next week we are watching a little film called Rawhead Rex. Woo! All right, right. Yeah. Clyde Finally. Hey, I've been doing this for four years, and I always want to watch Rawhead Rex. <laughs> Finally, am so I going to be here? Go. I hope I'm going to be here. I hope you're going to be here. You so. better be here. <laughs> That's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Tune in to find out if Sean's here. And until then, and Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. And the basement is going dark.